Well, and today, mail carriers and postal workers saying enough is enough, blaming a major drop in performance on a staffing crisis. All this comes as neighborhoods in Seattle, Minnesota, even Texas reported several days without getting their mail. Now to Brandon Thompson in studio with us, going beyond the headlines with what these workers want. Brandon? So the workers tell me it's hard to recruit because of mandatory overtime and work on Sundays. That recruitment challenge is forcing mandatory overtime and work on Sundays. It's a cycle they're stuck in. Last year, though, the post office lost less money than the year before as the postmaster general makes sweeping changes. We were absolutely essential workers. Rallying for support. We are seeing mandatory overtime across the board. Working you know, over 12 hours, seven days a week you know, work in their Sundays. Not be given the time and the tools and the training to do their jobs to service the American people. Those conditions, Cortez says, are making mail delays across the country worse, as well as more trouble recruiting new workers and retaining the ones already there. We lose a lot of people that are love the post office and want to work there, and they just end up going to different jobs because we're not having the, the wages and the benefits. Some delays are intentional, like Postmaster General Louis DeJoy's announcement last year that a third of first class mail would be delayed in order to cut costs. That means bills, social security checks, and even medication. It's not uncommon to see first class mail even within Portland, take days to get from one Portland address to another. The moves come as DeJoy has implemented a 10-year restructuring plan signed by President Biden. Last year, the post office's reported losses decreased from more than $1.5 billion down to $1 billion. In remarks to the Post Office Board of Governors this month, DeJoy says it means, quote, this is a new postal service recognizing it's a new day in a new economy and we're leading the way to improve this cherished institution. But Cortez and Robertson say he's leaving little to cherish. Under Postmaster General DeJoy, we've actually seen that worsen. We've not only seen the service standards erode, but the attitude toward the mail has changed. Employees in Portland have had to go to Montana to cover shifts because rural post offices are struggling even more. Some are even closing. We reached out to the post office today to respond directly to this, but we did not hear back. It's worth noting the post office's unions were actually a major push in President's Day becoming a federal holiday and providing more three-day weekends for workers, guys. All right, a lot in this, Brandon. Thank you.